This morning on CBS 2 News, a look at the aftermath of the Four Corners fire here in Idaho. What residents say they're taking away from the experience. Plus, thousands of neighbors in Washington state fleeing their homes. Why officials are warning them to get out before it's too late. Plus, recession fears. They aren't going anywhere as inflation continuing to cause problems across the globe. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. A live look for you of downtown Boise on this Monday, October 17th, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson. And I'm Ashley Carter. And let's start our morning off with yeah. Vasily Varlamos with a look at our weather. Yeah, it's going to be a beautiful day today. A little bit chilly this morning, but temperatures are going to start to rise and we're going to see that sunshine throughout the day today as well as into tomorrow. Here's a look at that chilly morning. 50 degrees outside right now in Boise. Over in Nampa, 46 degrees there. 39 in Ontario and 40 degrees right now in Mountain Home. Up in the mountains, they're nearing freezing right now. 33 degrees over in McCall. But temperatures will jump up fairly quickly today. 76 degrees, mostly sunny skies expected here in Boise. Not much change in the forecast today and through the rest of this week compared to last week. We're going to continue to see those sunny skies and dry conditions as well. Future cast showing us the little to no cloud cover we're going to see. There are some high clouds that we're going to see Monday night, but it's going to clear up as we head into Tuesday morning and Tuesday is going to be picture perfect here in the Treasure Valley. We're going to see no clouds in the sky. That sunshine is going to continue heading into Wednesday. Just perfect fall temperatures. 77 degrees over in Boise, 77 in Emmett and Mountain Home expected to be the high and 75 degrees over in Caldwell. Oh, another picture perfect week. Thank you, Vasily. It is 501 on your Monday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. A live look out there this morning. Yeah, very quiet start to our Monday. Uh, no reports of anything slowing you down. It's what we like to see. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you're turning on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates and turning now to fire season. Though it wasn't the largest fire in Idaho this season, the Four Corners fire had one of the biggest impacts on southwestern Idaho. About a week into the blaze in the mountains west of Cascade, the wind switched, causing the fire to burn hot, fast and towards the homes on the lake, forcing those neighbors to evacuate. I have to admit that I didn't really think about fire when we bought the place here. People tell me that West Mountain is kind of an asbestos mountain. It hasn't burned in decades. But once you see that fire start and you see the trees torching, it becomes top of mind really quickly. Tom Gresham and his wife moved to Cascade from hurricane country. He says they're thankful to those crews who managed to keep that blaze at bay. And he plans to make changes to their property just in case they find themselves facing another close call. For more on the damage caused by the Four Corners fire, we have a special report from Chief Meteorologist Roland Stedham. Just head on over to IdahoNews.com to watch the full report. And more than 1,000 homes are under evacuation orders in Clark County, Washington. Officials there say the Nakia Creek fire is breaking containment lines. I, I mean, I think it's obviously people think it's pretty critical or else they wouldn't issue that. They don't they take that pretty seriously when they g get to that level. So it's, hey, grab what is important to you right now and make your way out of it. High winds have fueled the fire to move west and southwest, but homes aren't the only structures being threatened. As the blaze burns closer towards the large correction center, a facility which has a capacity to hold 480 inmates. Well, this morning, there are new signs a recession could be imminent. Now, the International Monetary Fund, they're lowering their projections for global economic growth for 2023. Our national correspondent, Christine Frizzau, has the latest. For so many Americans, inflation is top of mind. I'm hoping that it goes down, but all I see is it rising up and it's getting harder and harder out here. The reality on Main Street bringing new warnings from Wall Street and beyond. They're likely to put U.S. in some kind of recession six, nine months from now. The risks of recession are rising. 
As a Wall Street Journal survey of economists put the probability of a recession in the next 12 months at 63 percent, up from 49 percent in July's survey. The war in Ukraine, a major factor in food and energy prices rising around the globe. A lesson learned that may help the economy in the long run. It was all about cheap, cheap capital, uh, mostly from the U.S., cheap labor, mostly from Asia, in particular China, and cheap energy, in particular Russia coming into Europe. All those things are going away now. That shift, though, not coming soon enough for those struggling to make ends meet. A recent survey finding 76 percent of adults are making lifestyle changes to prepare for a potential recession, including 34 percent who say they're delaying making major purchases, such as a house or a car. Some speaking out against recent actions by the Federal Reserve, raising rates to try to cool demand. I think that it is wrong to be saying that the way we're going to deal with inflation is by lowering wages and increasing unemployment. That is not what we should be doing. The Biden administration insisting it's working hard to strengthen the supply side of the equation, with demand just not letting up. Part of why we do see a lot of pressure on prices is that while Demand has come back. Uh, Americans uh, have more income because uh, Americans have jobs in this hi almost historically low level of unemployment. Uh, it's been hard for the supply side to keep up. Fear is now growing that low unemployment rate will be the next thing to take a turn and that recession could follow. I'm Christine Frizzell reporting. Well, gas prices are sitting high this morning. In Idaho, our average is still around 4.41 a gallon. That is 52 cents higher than the national average. Now, according to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up here in the area, that'll be Costco. It lists the location on South Cole Road in Boise at just 4.15 a gallon. And your home heating bill probably going to be higher this winter. Now, the U.S. Energy Information Administration says the price of natural gas heating oil, propane and electricity will be more than it was last winter. Now families with propane, they can expect a 5% bump and a 10% bump for electric heat. But for homes with natural gas or heating oil, that's expected to see a 28% jump. And we're not even eating Halloween candy just yet. And already people planning their Thanksgiving turkeys. That is a good idea because meat markets, they warn inventory, could be impacted this year. Now turkey farms feeling the inflation punch leading to higher prices. Now some are suggesting turkey alternatives to help save a bit of cash. You don't necessarily have to have that bird on the table. You can have other things and enjoy a great dinner. Another factor making tur turkey, of course, harder to find. The Department of Agriculture saying that the return of avian flu has led to depopulation of about 5.4 million turkeys. Now, experts say it's best to start discussing Thanksgiving plans now before the bird runs out. And today, volunteers are putting the finishing touches on a mural in the pedestrian tunnel at 8th Street. It's expected to be finished sometime today, and this is the one that's near Anne Franklin Memorial. Now, back in December, someone painted anti-Semitic graffiti in that tunnel. And Meridian's Recycle the Fall event is back again this year. It's done in partnership with Republic, which provides the city's waste and recycling services. Folks in Meridian are encouraged to leave their leaves out front in paper sacks for collection. They can also be dropped off, but remember, this isn't just for any yard waste. So, no branches, garden plants, or pumpkins and you're limited to about 10 bags a week. Curbside collection starts on Halloween and will run until November 26th, and drop-offs run from October 18th through December 15th. For a list of all the drop-off locations and the guidelines, go on to IdahoNews.com. Yeah, one of my favorite times of year, and it looks like our fall conditions, yeah, sticking around for mm -hmm. another week. We've been so lucky, Vasily. Yeah, today might be a great day for yard work because it's going to be beautiful. The sun is going to be out, clear skies, little to no clouds in sight, so going to be another gorgeous one here. 77 degrees expected as the high here in Boise. Over in Medford, they're looking at about 80 degrees, but as you can see in blue over in the in the Midwest, they are over in the Midwest. They are seeing a huge cold front here. We're continuing to deal with high pressure, 77 degrees in Boise and 73 degrees in Idaho Falls. Those are both up 
10 to 12 degrees above the average for this time of year, and that's due to this high pressure system making its way through the gem state. We've been dealing with this high pressure system for over a week and a half now, and it's going to continue on through this week as well. We're going to see sunny skies as well as tons of sunshine here in the Treasure Valley as well as over in the mountains, and that's going to continue on. No, not much change expected over the next few days. We're going to see that sun. We're going to see those above average temperatures, but there is a chance of rain this weekend. A low pressure system building off the coast of Alaska that may make its way here into the Treasure Valley. Now, the temperature trends for the next couple of days going to look very, very similar. 77 degrees on Monday and Tuesday. That'll drop to 76 on Wednesday and then 75 degrees on Thursday. Friday is where we'll start to see that drop in temperatures. 71 degrees on Friday and then we could see some rain on Saturday and Sunday. Here is that low pressure system that's currently building over on the Gulf of Alaska and that could make its way here into Boise by Saturday and into Sunday as well. Obviously, we do need winter to come eventually. I'm liking, of course, these fall temperatures. If you could keep it mid 70s forever, I would take it the silly. But yeah. Sunshine, any any type of clouds hanging no, around? No, little to no clouds. We might see some clouds this morning, just some high clouds, but no low clouds expected at all. We're not going to see any kind of precipitation. Great. If you're heading out for a walk, perfect mm -hmm. time of exactly. year. Thank you. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We, of course, bring in team traffic all morning long. Let's take a live look out there this morning. It is looking good, but very sleepy as we're kicking off our Monday morning. Everything kind of slow moving out there, but uh, no reports of anything slowing you down. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, a suspected serial killer caught in California. Why police say they believe he was on a mission to kill when they found him. And later, we take you to this scene in London this morning. Why these bears are going to a great cause. Hey, it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at Friday's question. Only 10% of people have played this sport. And that's it. What is it? Pickleball. Oh, that's a fun game. Only 10%. Thought it'd be a little higher. <laughs> All right, now for today's question, only 12% of adults use this word to describe themselves. Hmm. All right, folks, what do you think it is? CBS 2's adventure weather local forecast showing us the temperatures over in Emmett. 75 degrees today and then that will drop to 45 degrees tonight and then we'll jump right back up to 75 degrees tomorrow over in Emmett and then moving over to Council. 76 degrees expected there just one degree higher than Emmett that will drop to 40 degrees by uh, at night and then that will jump up to 77 degrees tomorrow. No, thank you Vasily. Well, police in a, say a Stockton, California man was on a quote mission to kill when they arrested him over the weekend, bringing an end to weeks long search for a suspect in a string of fatal shootings. Now, CBS News Wendy Gillette reports that community members, they say they can now breathe again with that suspect behind bars. Residents of Stockton, California are expressing relief two days after the suspect in a series of deadly shootings was taken into police custody. I felt so much joy for the families and relief knowing that we don't have to be paralyzed by fear anymore and anxiety in our community. Police said tips from community members helped lead to the arrest of 43 year old Wesley Brownlee early Saturday during a traffic stop. At the time, police say Brownlee had a handgun and he was wearing dark clothing and a mask around his neck. He was out hunting. We are sure we stopped another killing. Authorities say ballistics link Brownlee to six shooting deaths. Five men were killed between July and September in Stockton and another man was killed last year in Oakland. A woman is also believed to have been shot and wounded by the suspect last year. Ahead of the arrest, Stockton police had released this surveillance video of the suspect. We'll use every resource at our disposal to make sure the people of our city are protected and feel safe. Officials also searched Brownlee's home after obtaining a warrant. Formal murder charges are expected to be announced Tuesday during his scheduled arraignment. Wendy Gillette, CBS News.
Now, police say their work isn't done yet as they search for the motive in those killings. Now, most of the victims were Hispanic men, some of them also homeless. Well, switching gears, police in East Idaho looking for any information about a hit and run crash. Now, Idaho State Police say it happened yesterday in Franklin County between a vehicle and a bicycle. Now, anyone who has any information about this incident is asked to call Idaho State Police Dispatch. That number is on your screen, 208-239-9808. And neighbors in Panoma, California, holding a fundraiser over the weekend at a taco stand where a customer was killed. A car crashed into the stand on Friday, killing 53-year-old Gilberto Cazares Payan. The fundraiser donating all proceeds to his family. It makes me happy, honestly. It makes me so happy that not only for his wife and his kids, that everybody's coming out to support and helping them in this hard time. Twelve other people suffered injuries in the crash. Three of those people are in critical condition. Police are trying to determine if the driver was under the influence at the time of the crash. Well, hey, take a look at this. More than a thousand Paddington Bears left in tribute to late Queen Elizabeth II. Now, they'll be donated to a children's charity. Mourners actually left thousands of these as tributes outside Buckingham Palace and in royal parks across London. Now, the Queen did become linked to Paddington Bear. That followed a two, as the two appeared together in a short comedy video, marking the monarch's 70th year on the throne. Now, these bears will be professionally cleaned before being delivered to Barnados. That's a children's charity in the UK. Too cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Love how cute, that. but it's going to be beautiful today. Yeah. It's just gorgeous conditions out. It's going to be sunny. It's going to be clear skies, and that's going to continue on for the rest of the week, too. So if you enjoy that sun, like Sarah, I know, does, yeah. but Ashley's not a big fan of the I'm sun. I'm ready huh? for winter to get here. <laughs> I like it. There's some honesty there, and I can appreciate that. Ready for cooler temperatures. Yes, I know Sarah loves fall, but I am just itching for those cooler temperatures. Yeah, so. I mean, there's a chance at rain Saturday and Sunday, so if you're into precipitation, that, that's going to happen. And be temperatures kind of will drop below <laughs> average as well. The average right now is 64 degrees, and we're going to see above average temperatures today. That high is going to be about 13 degrees above the average. 77 degrees is expected to be the high today. The biggest temperature jump will happen from 9 to 11 a.m., 48 degrees at 9. That'll jump to 60 degrees by 11 a.m., leading to that high by 5 p.m. Now, the reason for these above average temperatures is due to this high pressure system that has been sticking around the gem state for much of the past two weeks. That's why we've been seeing this sunshine as well as those clear skies. Tons of sunshine expected over the next couple days, and we're going to see that as well. But there is a chance of a low pressure system building off of the coast of Alaska here. There is a chance of rain happening here in the Treasure Valley by Saturday and Sunday. But for today, it's going to be sunny, 77 degrees through much of the Treasure Valley. Emmett, Boise, Mountain Home, as well as over in Ontario, all going to reach 77 degrees is the high. 76 over in Nampa and 77 degrees over in Idaho City. Moving to the extent extended forecast here 77 Monday and Tuesday that'll jump to 76 degrees by Wednesday and 75 degrees on Thursday we're going to start to see temperatures drop heading into Friday 71 degrees there and then 59 degrees expected on Saturday, that's when the rain will make its way in. And that's going to be the same over in the mountains as well. 70 or 50 degrees expected on Saturday. That's when those showers are going to come in. And Sunday will drop to 46. So decreasing temperatures over the weekend. Ooh, just above freezing too over the weekend for our friends in the mountains. Mm -hmm. It's going to be chilly. Yeah, it's going to be chilly over there, Ooh. especially there is a chance of snow in higher elevations too. So those mountain areas could see some snow. Now it's about that time. I know mm -hmm. Ashley is probably excited. I can see her excited over to the side of us. All right, well, let's take it over to traffic because CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI, of course, we bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's take a live look out there this morning. Everything running smoothly out there. Yeah, not much to report still. It's a good start to our morning. If you have a couple extra minutes, grab a cup of coffee or your favorite cup of tea and join us for your latest news headlines. And of course, Vasily's weather. And when you eventually get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We're diving into what you need to know about this prominent disease. And later, ending polio around the world. Who's backing the big undertaking? 
when we come back. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 523. Welcome back and take a look at this. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month and the White House lighting up to raise awareness. Now patients are sharing their stories, helping educate women about the disease and the importance of early detection. Now Naomi Ruckham introduces us to a woman being treated for triple negative breast cancer. Renee Williams gets mammograms and does self exams with her family history of breast cancer. Earlier this year, the 52 year old felt a lump. My mom passed away from breast cancer when I was five years old. I always had a feeling that either me or my sisters, one of us would end up with it and it ended up being me. Renee was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer. The aggressive cancer is more common in women under 40 who are black or who have a BRCA1 mutation. The cancers are more likely to come back after treatment and have a poorer outlook than other breast cancers. A triple negative breast cancer is a very scary diagnosis, but it does sound like there's hope. Yes, absolutely. So Dr. The, uh, Sylvia Adams with NYU Langone uh, Health says adding immunotherapy to the standard chemotherapy is a major advance in treatment for patients, mm -hmm. including Renee. We actually had a very early good clinical response and were able to take her to surgery earlier. And she had no residual cancer at time of surgery, which predicts an excellent outcome and, um, and cure. For patients with early disease, clinical trials are underway to better tailor treatments. Make sure that patients have less side effects from, from the chemotherapy. Maybe we can do less chemotherapy in some patients. I don't care what diagnosis you get. That doesn't mean it's a death sentence. Renee wants women to know early detection is critical. Sometimes you won't feel it. Go and get your mammograms. The mother and grandmother is starting radiation. She's back at work as an oncology clerk and grateful to help others going through what she has. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News, New York. And the American Cancer Society estimates nearly 288,000 new breast cancer cases will be diagnosed in women just this year. Now, triple negative breast cancer, it accounts for 10 to 15 percent of all breast cancers nationwide. Well, having a window in a hospital room could give patients a much better shot at a speedy recovery following surgery. Now, after looking at nearly 4,000 cases, researchers at the University of Michigan, they found mortality rates were 20% higher for patients admitted to a room without a window. Now, their research also shows that giving patients their own room and keeping them close to the nursing station also improved outcomes. And the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation says it will commit an additional $1.2 billion to the effort to end polio around the world. The announcement was made at the World Health Summit in Berlin. Part of the money will be used to stop outbreaks of new variants of the virus. Still to come on CBS 2 News, an aerial view from the Four Corners fire. A look at the damage and how folks in the area are cleaning up. And of course, a look at your primetime lineup. Don't forget about that. And don't forget about our question of the day. Of course, we'll read some of your guesses coming up next. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, thousands of neighbors in Washington state fleeing their homes. Why officials are warning them to get out before it's too late. Plus, recession fears, they aren't going anywhere as inflation continues to cause problems across the globe. And volunteers putting the finishing touches on a new mural. How soon they're expected to finish. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Forecast showing a picture perfect day here in the Treasure Valley right now in Boise. Clear skies, a little bit chilly out, 50 degrees right now with a little bit of a southerly wind of about 5 miles per hour. But that shouldn't last long. Temperatures will be about 13 degrees above the average for this time of year. 76 to 77 degrees here in Boise. Not much change from the past couple days where we've been seeing sunshine and these dry conditions. And that's going to stick around over the next couple days. Due to this high pressure system that 
that's impacting much of the gem state and we're seeing little to no clouds. There might be some high clouds here in Boise on Monday or Monday afternoon into Monday evening, but shouldn't impact us very much here in the Treasure Valley. We're going to see those clouds make their way out of the Treasure Valley and up into northern Idaho, and we're going to see clear skies here for much of the day tomorrow. High temperatures for today, 77 in Boise, Emmett, Mountain Home, as well as over in Ontario, 75 degrees in Caldwell and up in the mountains, 74 degrees expected today in McCall. Now, thank you, Vasily. It is 531 on your Monday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing you team traffic all morning long. Live look out there this morning. Everything looking good. A few more headlights added to the mix, but still not much to report. It is looking good out there this morning. So when you do eventually get in the car, just make sure you're turning on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Though it wasn't the largest fire in Idaho this season, the Four Corners fire had one of the biggest impacts on southwestern Idaho. About a week into the blaze in the mountains west of Cascade, the wind switched, causing the fire to burn hot, fast, and towards the homes on the lake, and forcing neighbors to evacuate. I have to admit that I didn't really think about fire when we bought the place here. People tell me that West Mountain is kind of an asbestos mountain. It hasn't burned in decades. But once you see that fire start and you see the trees torching, it becomes top of mind really quickly. Tom Gresham and his wife moved to Cascade from Hurricane Country. He says they're thankful to those crews who managed to keep the blaze at bay and plans to make changes to their property in case they find themselves facing yet another close call. For more on the damage caused by the Four Corners fire, we have a special report from Chief Meteorologist Roland Stedham. Just head on over to IdahoNews.com to watch the full report. And more than 1,000 homes are under evacuation orders in Clark County, Washington. Officials there say the Nokia Creek fire is breaking containment lines. I, I mean, I think it's obviously people think it's pretty critical or else they wouldn't issue that. They don't they take that pretty seriously when they g get to that level. So it's, hey, grab what is important to you right now and make your way out of it. High winds have fueled the fire to move west and southwest, but homes aren't the only structures being threatened as the blaze burns closer toward the large correction center a facility which has a capacity to house 480 inmates. Well, this morning there are new signs a recession could be imminent. Now, the International Monetary Fund, they're lowering projections for global economic growth for the year 2023. And our national correspondent, Christine Frizzau, has the latest. For so many Americans, inflation is top of mind. I'm hoping that it goes down, but all I see is it rising up and it's getting harder and harder out here. The reality on Main Street bringing new warnings from Wall Street and beyond. They're likely to put U.S. in some kind of recession six, nine months from now. The risks of recession are rising. As a Wall Street Journal survey of economists put the probability of a recession in the next 12 months at 63 percent, up from 49 percent in July's survey. The war in Ukraine, a major factor in food and energy prices rising around the globe. A lesson learned that may help the economy in the long run. It was all about cheap, cheap capital, uh, mostly from the U.S., cheap labor, mostly from Asia, in particular China, and cheap energy, in particular Russia coming into Europe. All those things are going away now. That shift, though, not coming soon enough for those struggling to make ends meet. A recent survey finding 76% of adults are making lifestyle changes to prepare for a potential recession, including 34% who say they're delaying making major purchases, such as a house or a car. Some speaking out against recent actions by the Federal Reserve, raising rates to try to cool demand. I think that it is wrong to be saying that the way we're going to deal with inflation is by lowering wages and increasing unemployment. That is not what we should be doing. The Biden administration insisting it's working hard to strengthen the supply side of the equation with demand just not letting up. Part of why we do see a lot of pressure on prices is that while demand has come back, uh, Americans uh, have more income because uh, Americans have jobs in this hi almost historically low level of unemployment. Uh, it's been hard for the supply side to keep up. Fears now growing that low unemployment rate will be the next thing to take a turn 
and that recession could follow. I'm Christine Frizzell reporting. Well, gas prices, they're sitting high this morning. In Idaho, our average around 4.41 a gallon, that is 52 cents higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up still going to be Costco. Now it lists the location out on South Cole Road in Boise at just 415 a gallon. And your home heating bill probably going to be higher this winter. Now the U.S. Energy Information Administration says prices of natural gas, heating oil, propane and electricity, they'll be more than last winter. Now families with propane, they can expect a 5% bump. Those with electric heat, a 10% bump. But for homes with natural gas or heating oil, that's expected to jump about 28%. And we're not even eating Halloween candy just yet. No judgments if you are, but some already planning their Thanksgiving turkeys. It's a good idea because meat markets, they warn inventory could be impacted this year. Turkey farms are feeling the inflation pinch leading to those higher prices. Now some suggest turkey alternatives to save a bit of cash. You don't necessarily have to have that bird on the table. You can have other things and enjoy a great dinner. Another factor making that turkey harder to find. The Department of Ag says the return of avian flu that's led to the depopulation of 5.4 million turkeys. Now experts say it is best to start discussing Thanksgiving plans now before the bird runs out. And today, volunteers are putting the finishing touches on a mural in the pedestrian tunnel at 8th Street. It's expected to be finished sometime today, and this is the one that's near Anne Frank Memorial. Now, back in December, someone painted anti-Semitic graffiti in that tunnel. And Meridian's Recycle the Fall event is back again this year. It's done in partnership with Republic, which provides the city's waste and recycling services. Folks in Meridian are encouraged to leave their leaves out front in paper sacks for collection. They can also be dropped off, but remember, this isn't just for any yard waste, so no branches, garden plants, or pumpkins. And you're limited to 10 bags a week. Curbside collection starts on Halloween and runs until November 26th, and drop-offs run from October 18th through December 15th. For a list of drop-off locations and all the guidelines you can expect, go to IdahoNews.com. All right, well, that news just makes me want to jump in a pile of leaves. Maybe not so much collect them to give away, but maybe don't put your pumpkins in there. That could be yeah. maybe a bad time for some people. Just putting that out there. But get your Halloween candy and start eating that yeah. whenever that you can, want. That can start anytime. Yeah. We're not judging. Have, have you began yet, Vasily? Oh, yeah, especially our... Uh, our uh, Assistant News Director Nicole, she oh, yeah. has a candy already out, and I've been snacking every once in a while. She has a couple oh, spooky, spooky decorations out there too. So we're getting into the Halloween spirit here at CBS too. Yeah, we are. And t conditions are also fall conditions as well. Temperatures are high as, but we are dealing with the leaves changing, and the sun is staying out. 77 degrees here in Boise. There is a cold front hitting much of the Midwest right now. That's where you, that's over near Pierre over in the top right corner. They're dealing with a, a cooler temperatures, but here in the Boise area, we're dealing with that high pressure that is keeping temperatures above average 77 degrees here in Boise expected as the high and 70 degrees over in Portland, 80 degrees in Medford and 75 degrees in Salt Lake. So all seasonably above average and that is due to high pressure that's continuing to batter the gem state. It's also impacting areas in northern Nevada, northern Utah, western Wyoming, all seeing temperatures above average as well as dry and sunny conditions. It is beautiful out here. Temperatures are above average, but we could see a drop heading into late this weekend. Not much change expected throughout the work week, though. Lots of sunshine and above average temperatures expected, but there is a chance of rain on Saturday. There's a low pressure system building off the coast of Alaska that is dropping those temperatures. As you can see here, Monday and Tuesday, both expected to be 77 degrees. We'll see temperatures drop heading into Wednesday and Thursday, and then we'll see the big drop heading into Friday. 71 degrees expected on Friday. That's where that cold front will start to make its way into the Treasure Valley area. We'll see temperatures drop below the average of 64 on Saturday and Sunday. I'll let you know a little bit more about that here in just a few minutes. Yeah, so get those nice walks, warm walks in for this week. Cooler temperatures heading yeah. our way. Cooler temperatures are on <laughs> the way and a chance of precipitation finally here in the Treasure Valley. Now excited for that. Thank you, Vasily. Well, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI, we bring you team traffic all morning long. A live look out there this morning. 
Yeah, some more people added to the mix as we're heading closer to that six o'clock hour. Still looking good out there. Hey, good morning for us out there on the commute. Uh, not much to report slowing you down. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you're tuning it to 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, now it's time for our question of the day. That question is only 12% of adults use this word to describe themselves. All right, Vasily, Ashley, what are we thinking? This one's pretty tough for me. I mean, I, I was struggling with, with this one for a little bit. Conversations here in the studio. I decided with extrovert, you know, like <laughs> a lot of people describe themselves as an introvert, even mm -hmm. if they're not. But I wonder if it goes the same way for extrovert too. What do you guys think? Yeah, maybe a little less in the world, especially. I know that I am a little into my introverted tendencies lately. So, no, I like that. I would also say 12%. Mm, Let's see, like bubbly. Bubbly. Oh, that's, that's a good a, one too. That's, that's a, a good bubble. One. All right. Yeah. What are you thinking, Ashley? Oh, this one, like Vasily, you know, I been struggling to think of an answer for this one, but I think maybe determined. Mm -hmm. I like that. Okay. Yeah. Now let's see what else our folks at home have to say. Anita says caring. That's a good guess. Oh, I love that. Hoping it's a little higher than that. 12%. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Doug says funny. I like that guess. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If you say you're funny. I don't know if I trust you. I think you just kind of hope that people notice yeah, you're funny, right? Right, right yeah. yes. All right. Ed ooh, says average. Interesting. Okay. I like this, Ed. That's a good answer. All right. Well, if you think you know the answer, you still have an hour and 15 minutes to get those guesses in. And of course, you can do that on our Facebook page or our Twitter. We'll read some of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS This Morning. Still to come on CBS 2 News, January 6 hearings wrapping up. Why some want to call on additional witnesses. CBS 2's adventure weather forecast showing us local temperatures around the Gem State over in Weezer. 75 degrees expected today. That'll drop to 35 degrees tonight. Cooler temperatures over in Weezer tonight, but that'll jump back up to 75 degrees tomorrow. And then over in Cascade, they're looking at 74 degrees. That'll drop below freezing to 27 degrees at night. And then we'll jump right back to 74 degrees tomorrow. Thank you, Vasily. Well, the January 6th Congressional Committee, they're set to issue a subpoena to former President Trump after members unanimously voted to do so following their final scheduled public hearing last week. Now, Mr. Trump responded a day later with a 14-page letter attacking the panel. CBS News correspondent Wendy Gillette, she has the latest developments from New York. There are nine eyes and zero knows. It's unknown when the January 6th committee will issue a subpoena to former President Trump after Thursday's vote, but it's expected soon. He has not indicated if he'll comply, responding with a rambling 14-page letter in which Trump called the committee members political hacks and thugs. Republican member Adam Kinzinger appeared on ABC's this week. He's required by law to come in and uh, he can ramble and push back all he wants. That's the requirement for uh, congressional support. To come in. Congressman Kinzinger was asked if the Justice Department should hold Trump in contempt if he does not comply. Look, that's a that's a bridge we cross if we have to get there. Committee member Democratic Representative Stephanie Murphy was asked the same question on NBC's Meet the Press. With previous subpoenas, what you've seen the committee do is be very deliberate and take the response to our subpoenas on a case-by-case -case basis. And I imagine that we will also do that um, because we understand the seriousness of the charge of our committee. Over the weekend, Trump also came under fire from the Anti-Defamation League and others for a post on his social media platform criticizing American Jews. He wrote, no president has done more for Israel than I have, adding that evangelicals are far more appreciative of this than the people of the Jewish faith, especially those living in the U.S. He also wrote that he could easily be the prime minister of Israel. Wendy Gillette, CBS News. Now, the January 6th committee has until January to finish their work. That's because they're only authorized through the current Congress. Now, Congresswoman Zoe Zolofregren says the January 6th committee, they want to hear from former Secret Service Assistant Director Tony Ornato. Then White House aide Cassidy Hutchinson testified that he told her about then-President Donald Trump's behavior on January 6th. 
Now, her secondhand account is that Trump's protectors told him not to go to the Capitol, and he lunged at one of them out of anger. And more explosions struck U Ukraine's capital city of Kyiv this morning. Ukrainian officials say waves of kamikaze drones with explosives carried out those attacks. It was not immediately clear if there were any casualties as a result of the explosions. But Ukrainian authorities say that a residential building was hit. And a local charity is shipping three 40-foot containers full of medical supplies to hospitals in Ukraine. In them is everything from band-aids to wheelchairs. The donation comes from Hands of Hope Northwest, and the value of this shipment is nearly $1 million. The supplies should be in Ukrainian hospitals in a little over a month. Wow. Love to see that. Yeah, yeah amazing. A lot of help. Yeah, great things done yeah. by that charity. No, but, but really, I mean, mm -hmm. it's fantastic. And speaking of fantastic, guys, another <laughs> week of fall temperatures. I don't know about you, but I, I love fall. I like at least that it's staying a little above the average for this time mm -hmm. of the year. But you are telling us that colder air moving its way in. Yeah, colder air from the Gulf mm -hmm. of Alaska is making its way down to the Treasure Valley. That's going to happen over the course of this week. But throughout the week this week, we're going to see sunshine, and it's not going to change from last week at all. We're going to continue to see that high pressure heating up temperatures above average. Today's high 13 degrees above the average of 64 today. 77 will be that high. The biggest temperature jump today will happen from 9 to 11 o'clock. 48 degrees. That'll jump to 60 degrees by 11 leading to that high by 5 p.m. Now the reason for these above average temperatures it is that high pressure system that we've been dealing with over the past few days. It is bringing that these high temperatures over into the gem state off the coast. Tons of sunshine expected over the next couple of days. But like we talked about just a minute ago, there is a chance of rain making its way over into the Treasure Valley. This low pressure system here is going to continue to build over the next couple days, bringing in low pressure into the Treasure Valley. That's why we could see some showers, not only here in the valley, but also in the mountains as well. 77 degrees in Boise expected, also 77 in Emmett and Ontario and Mountain Home and then 74 degrees up in McCall. Moving to the extended forecast, we're going to see sunshine, like I said, from Monday to Friday. Temperatures will gradually drop 76 on Wednesday. That'll jump to 75 degrees on Thursday and then 71 degrees on Friday. Then we'll see showers both in the mountains as well as in the Treasure Valley. Temperatures will drop to below average both Saturday and Sunday and showers are expected on Saturday. Yeah, so get those walks in, enjoying that warm weather. Yeah, next week, another story. Yeah, next week will be another story. <laughs> this week, going to be beautiful. So take in that sunshine because we may not get a lot of it heading into next week. Yeah, loving those leaves changing. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI, we bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's take a live look out there this morning. Yeah, looking good. Very quiet out there as we kick off our Monday morning. Hope you all are having a good one. We have no reports of any incidents or accidents slowing you down this morning. So when you do eventually get in the car, just make sure you're turning on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News, the country's largest grocery chains becoming one. Why it's facing pushback, some even signaling an antitrust breach. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 5.53. Welcome back. Governors in border states like Texas and Florida, they're continuing to bus and fly migrants to northern cities, sometimes unannounced. Now, it continues the fight between the Republican and Democratic leaders over immigration policy, while the asylum seekers are sadly caught in the middle. Now, CBS's Astrid Martinez takes a closer look at what many migrant families have to go through to make it to the U.S. It's a dangerous journey that can end in death or the chance to start a new life. Thousands of migrants flocking to the U.S.-Mexico border in search of better opportunities. In recent months, nearly 16,000 have been dropped off in New York City, including Vilker Infante and Kaila Cherema. Fleeing violence, the young couple left Venezuela for Peru. But with no steady work there, in July, Vilker, Kayla, and 
their 10-year-old son made the month-long torturous trek north and crossed into Texas. In August, they flew to New York. Bien con en todo Excellent. The couple remains thankful to U.S. Border Patrol officials who granted them temporary legal asylum. These people cross sometimes seven, eight, ten countries to get here. Jesus Aguais is the executive director of Aid for Life International, a nonprofit that helps asylum seekers with health care and housing needs. We want one thing and one thing only, that everyone is welcome and treated with dignity in New York City. But the couple says it was different in Texas. They say they were approached by people claiming to be from Catholic organizations who insisted the family board a bus to Chicago where the government might take their child. In a statement, a spokesperson for the office of Governor Greg Abbott said the migrants willingly choose to go to Washington, New York City, or Chicago. For now, the family is focused on applying for permanent legal status and working papers, which can take up to a year, a critical step to starting their new life. Astrid Martinez, CBS News, New York. Now, migrants do have a right to apply for permanent legal asylum, but that process can take years. Well, two of the nation's largest grocery store chains, Kroger's and Albertsons, have announced a nearly $25 billion deal to merge. Together, the companies will have more than 710,000 workers and they'll operate nearly 5,000 stores. The deal is likely to face scrutiny from U.S. antitrust enforcers. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, is fire season finally over? A look at the blazes burning here in the West. Plus, is a recession imminent? We hear from the experts. Now you're watching CBS 2 News this morning. Your local news and weather, they continue all day on IdahoNews.com. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, a look at the aftermath of the Four Corners fire here in Idaho. What residents say they're taking away from the experience. Plus, thousands of neighbors in Washington state fleeing their homes. Why officials are warning them to get out before it's too late. Plus, recession fears aren't going anywhere as inflation continues to cause problems across the globe. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. A live picture of downtown Boise on this Monday, October 17th, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson. And I'm Ashley Carter. <laughs> and let's start our morning with Vasily Varlamos. Hey, yeah, it's going to be a beautiful day today. <laughs> a little bit colder this morning. Temperatures are in the high 40s right now. Clear yeah. skies this morning, and that's going to stick around throughout the day. But it's shaping up to be very beautiful today. The sun's going to be out. It's going to be awesome. Okay and these temperatures getting me even more excited, Vasily. Yeah, 47 degrees out right now, a little bit chilly throughout the Treasure Valley, 40 degrees over in Mountain Home and 42 degrees in Nampa, 38 over in Ontario and up in the mountains. They're sitting at about freezing at 32 degrees. Today in Boise, 76 to 77 degrees, mostly sunny skies, not much change from the last few days. We're gonna see that sunshine. We're gonna see these dry conditions and this is gonna last throughout the week. Here's a look at the next couple days in terms of cloud cover. There's those high clouds that we could see in the afternoon later this evening, but by Monday night and into Tuesday morning, it's going to clear up and we're going to see those clear skies, especially on Tuesday. We might not see a cloud in sight throughout the day heading into Wednesday as well. Going to be clear skies heading th throughout the week. 77 degrees looking like the high throughout most of the Treasure Valley. 77 in Boise, Emmett, Ontario, as well as over in Mountain Home. 76 degrees in Nampa and 75 degrees over in Caldwell and then up in the mountains, 74 degrees expected in McCall. Couldn't ask for better conditions. Thank you, Vasily. It is 6.02 on your Monday. 
CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Looking live out there this morning, courtesy of ACHD. Yeah, everything looking good. Uh, not much to report out there this morning. Like to see that. When you do eventually get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Though it wasn't the largest fire in Idaho this season, the Four Corners fire was had one of the biggest impacts on southwestern Idaho. About a week into the blaze in the mountains west of Cascade, the wind switched, causing that fire to burn hot, fast, and towards those homes on the lake, forcing neighbors to evacuate. I have to admit that I didn't really think about fire when we bought the place here. People tell me that West Mountain is kind of an asbestos mountain. It hasn't burned in decades. But once you see that fire start and you see the trees torching, it becomes top of mind really quickly. Tom Gresham and his wife moved to Cascade from hurricane country. He says they are thankful to crews who managed to keep that blaze at bay. And he plans to make changes to their property in case they find themselves facing another close call. For more on the damage caused by the Four Corners fire, we have a special report from Chief Meteorologist Roland Stedham. Just head on over to IdahoNews.com to watch the full report. And more than 1,000 neighbors in Washington are under evacuation orders in Clark County, Washington. Officials there say the Nakia Creek fire is breaking containment lines. I, I mean, I think it's obviously people think it's pretty critical or else they wouldn't issue that. They don't they take that pretty seriously when they g get to that level. So it's, hey, grab what is important to you right now and make your way out of it. High winds have fueled that fire to move west and southwest, but homes aren't the only structure that are being threatened. As the blaze burns closer towards the large correction center, a facility which has a capacity to house 480 inmates. Well, this morning there are new signs a recession could be imminent. Now the International Monetary Fund lowering projections for global economic growth for 2023. Our national correspondent Christine Frizzau has the latest. For so many Americans, inflation is top of mind. I'm hoping that it goes down, but all I see is it rising up and it's getting harder and harder out here. The reality on Main Street bringing new warnings from Wall Street and beyond. They're likely to put U.S. in some kind of recession six, nine months from now. The risks of recession are rising. As a Wall Street Journal survey of economists put the probability of a recession in the next 12 months at 63 percent, up from 49 percent in July's survey. The war in Ukraine, a major factor in food and energy prices rising around the globe. A lesson learned that may help the economy in the long run. It was all about cheap, cheap capital, uh, mostly from the U.S., cheap labor, mostly from Asia, in particular China, and cheap energy, in particular Russia coming into Europe. All those things are going away now. That shift, though, not coming soon enough for those struggling to make ends meet. A recent survey finding 76% of adults are making lifestyle changes to prepare for a potential recession, including 34% who say they're delaying making major purchases, such as a house or a car. Some speaking out against recent actions by the Federal Reserve, raising rates to try to cool demand. I think that it is wrong to be saying that the way we're going to deal with inflation is by lowering wages and increasing unemployment. That is not what we should be doing. The Biden administration insisting it's working hard to strengthen the supply side of the equation, with demand just not letting up. Part of why we do see a lot of pressure on prices is that while Demand has come back. Uh, Americans uh, have more income because uh, Americans have jobs in this hi almost historically low level of unemployment. Uh, it's been hard for the supply side to keep up. Fears now growing that low unemployment rate will be the next thing to take a turn and that recession could follow. I'm Christine Frizzell reporting. Well, gas prices are sitting high this morning. In Idaho, our average still around 441 a gallon. That is 52 cents higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up will be Costco. You can find it on South Cole Road in Boise at 415 a gallon. And we're not even eating Halloween candy just yet. And already people are planning their Thanksgiving turkeys. It is a good idea, though. Meat markets are warning inventory could be impacted this year. Now, turkey farms, they're feeling the inflation pinch leading to higher prices. 
and now some suggesting turkey alternatives to help save a little cash. Another factor making those turkeys harder to find. The Department of Ag says the return of avian flu has led to the depopulation of about 5.4 million turkeys. Experts say it is best to discuss Thanksgiving plans now before the bird runs out. And today, volunteers are putting the finishing touches on a mural in the pedestrian tunnel at 8th Street. It's expected to be finished sometime today, and this is the one that's near Anne Frank Memorial. Now, back in December, someone painted anti-Semitic graffiti in that tunnel. And Meridian's Recycle the Fall event is back again this year. It's done in partnership with Republic, which provides the city's waste and recycling services. Folks in Meridian are encouraged to leave their leaves out front in paper sacks for collection, or they can also be dropped off. But remember, this isn't just for any yard waste, so no branches, garden plants, or pumpkins. And you're limited to 10 bags a week. Curbside collection starts on Halloween and will run until November 26th, and drop-offs run from October 18th through December 15th. For a list of drop-off locations and all the guidelines, go to IdahoNews.com. And hey, it's looking like if you want to do a little yard work, the temperatures yeah. keeping on up. Ashley, yeah. is that is that your plan for the week? Um, <laughs> yes. Well, my boyfriend's plan because he he, <laughs> Love it. he hate or he helps me. He yeah. helps with the yard. But the leaves have started to change, which has been beautiful, and he gets to rake those up too. So <laughs> exactly, you get to enjoy it. He gets to yes. rake them. Yes, it's, it's yeah. a win-win. Yeah, I get I like to it. enjoy the scenery. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be beautiful these next couple days. The leaves are certainly changing, and we're going to see temperatures start to change here in the next couple days as well. Temperature highs today, 77 degrees right there today in Boise, 80 degrees expected over in Medford. Much of the Midwest getting hit with a cold front right now, keeping temperatures low in the middle of the country, as you can see in blue here, but over in the Boise area, continuing to deal with this high pressure and we're going to continue to deal with it over the next few days. It's not much change in the forecast, lots of sun and above average temperatures, but that change will happen next week. There is a chance of of rain heading into this weekend. We could see rain start as early as Saturday and that'll last into Sunday as well. But over the next few days, we're going to continue to deal with this high pressure system continuing to hit much of the gem state. That's why we're seeing these dry conditions as well as sunshine. This sunshine is going to last over the next couple days as well. Now looking at the next few days, this is where these temperatures are going to stay about the same. 77 degrees on Monday and Tuesday will drop to 76 degrees on Wednesday and then 75 degrees expected on Thursday. Friday is where we're going to see those temperatures start to drop due to this low pressure system off the coast of Alaska. That is what is going to change these temperatures heading into the weekend. It could bring precipitation. It could bring clouds. It will bring lower temperatures. Temperatures will drop for the first time in the last couple weeks to below the average of 64 degrees. We're going to see temperatures drop all the way into the mid 50s by Sunday. Sunday. All right. Well, enjoy that warm weather right now. Thank mm -hmm. you, Vasily. Yeah, of course. Well, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI brings you team traffic all morning long. Let's take a live look out there this morning. Yeah, everything looking pretty good. Let's send it on over to the News Talk Traffic Center with the one and only Ron O'Brien. Good morning, Ron. How's it looking out there? Well, good morning. Yeah, we're doing fine. It's uh, quiet. Typically, that's the case this time of the morning. I-84, East and West of Boise, 184. All quiet in that department. And light traffic, uh, other non-freeway routes. Closure continues in Nampa, one of the most recent closures. No through traffic still on uh, Southside Boulevard between Amity and Greenhurst. And that is scheduled to go until the 31st. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bland. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, just make sure you're tuning it to News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, a suspected serial killer caught in California. Why police say they believe he was on a mission to kill when they found him. And later, we take you to this scene in London this morning. Why these bears are going to a great cause. Well, hey, it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at Friday's question. Only 10% of people have played this sport. The answer, pickleball. All right, let's see what today's question is. Only 12% of adults use this word to describe themselves. All right, folks, thinking caps on, what is it?
CBS 2's Adventure Weather Local Forecast showing us temperatures across the Gem State today in Pay at 76 degrees. That'll drop to 38 degrees tonight and then it'll jump right back up to 76 degrees tomorrow. And then over in Idaho City, they're going to see a similar trend of the same temperatures today and tomorrow. 78 degrees today. That'll drop to 29 degrees at night. Cooler temperatures expected over there in the mountains and then it'll jump back up to 78 degrees tomorrow. Thank you, Vasily. Well, police say a Stockton, California man, he was on a mission to kill when they arrested him over the weekend, bringing an end to a week long search for a suspect in a string of fatal shootings. Now, CBS News' Wendy Gillette reports that community members now say they can breathe again with that suspect behind bars. Residents of Stockton, California are expressing relief two days after the suspect in a series of deadly shootings was taken into police custody. I felt so much joy for the families and relief knowing that we don't have to be paralyzed by fear anymore and anxiety in our community. Police said tips from community members helped lead to the arrest of 43 year old Wesley Brownlee early Saturday during a traffic stop. At the time, police say Brownlee had a handgun and he was wearing dark clothing and a mask around his neck. He was out hunting. We are sure we stopped another killing. Authorities say ballistics linked Brownlee to six shooting deaths. Five men were killed between July and September in Stockton and another man was killed last year in Oakland. A woman is also believed to have been shot and wounded by the suspect last year. Ahead of the arrest, Stockton police had released this surveillance video of the suspect. We'll use every resource at our disposal to make sure the people of our city are protected and feel safe. Officials also searched Brownlee's home after obtaining a warrant. Formal murder charges are expected to be announced Tuesday during his scheduled arraignment. Wendy Gillette, CBS News. Now, police say their work isn't done. They're searching for a motive in those killings. Most of those victims were Hispanic men, some of them also homeless. Well, switching gears back here at home, police in East Idaho looking for any information about a hit and run. Idaho State Police, they say it happened yesterday in Franklin County between a vehicle and a bicycle. Anyone with information about the incident is asked to call Idaho State Police Dispatch. That's 208-239-9808. And neighbors down in Panoma, California are holding a fundraiser over the weekend at a taco stand after a customer was killed. A car crashed into the stand on Friday, killing 53-year-old Gilberto Cazares Payon. The fundraiser donating all proceeds to his family. It makes me happy, honestly. It makes me so happy that not only for his wife and his kids, that everybody's coming out to support and helping them in this hard time. Twelve other people suffered injuries in the crash. Three of those people are in critical condition. Police are trying to determine if the driver was under the influence at the time of the crash. Well, hey, take a look at this. More than a thousand Paddington bears left in tribute to the late Queen Elizabeth II. They'll now be donated to a children's charity. Now, mourners, they left thousands as tributes outside Buckingham Palace and in royal parks across London. You'll recall the queen. She became linked to Paddington Bear after the two appeared together in a short comedy video marking the monarch's 70th year on the throne. These bears will now be professionally cleaned before being delivered to Barnados. That's a children's charity. Love that. Something to be nice and cozy with. And speaking of cozy, you know, we have perfect conditions this week, but that cool down is finally on the way. I know Ashley's excited. I am oh, ready. Yeah, Ashley's excited for that winter <laughs> weather because it seems like the seasons are almost changing. Temperatures are starting to drop. Even though we're in the midst of fall right now, we could be seeing winter weather making its way into the Treasure Valley <laughs> after <laughs> months of these hot temperatures, temperatures above average. Like we're going to see today, temperatures heading out the door this morning. The high will be about 13 degrees above the average for this time of year. The average is 64. Today's high going to be 77 degrees. The biggest temperature jump going to happen from 9 to 11 o'clock. 48 degrees expected at 9 o'clock. That'll jump to 60 by 11, leading to the high by around 5 p.m. Now, the reason for these higher than average temperatures is this high pressure system that's continuing to hit much of the Treasure Valley and much of the Gem State in general. We've been dealing with this for the last 
last week or so, and it's been giving us tons of sunshine over the last few days. But here's why we may see that winter weather start to come in. This low pressure system off the Gulf of Alaska is models are showing that it will make its way into much of the Treasure Valley and much of the Gem State by Saturday. 77 degrees expected to be a high across much of the Treasure Valley. 77 expected in Emmett. Boise Mountain Home as well as Ontario and then up in the mountains 74 degrees expected in McCall. Moving to the extended forecast, we're going to see sunshine through much of the work week, but Saturday is where we're going to see those showers come in. That's when that low pressure system will make its way into the Treasure Valley. 59 degrees expected as the high on Saturday and then 55 degrees expected on Sunday. Moving over to the mountains, we're seeing a similar trend with temperatures above average throughout the work week, but heading into the the weekend temperatures will drop below average 50 degrees expected on Saturday with those showers as well as 46 degrees on Sunday. So a cool down in the mix. Yeah, so just maybe a light jacket as you're heading out this mm -hmm. morning. Yeah, Not light jacket this morning. Temperatures are fairly cool this morning, but by the time that sun comes out, you won't need that jacket anymore. Yeah, layers are your friend. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. Well, good morning. Uh, doing fine. Nothing uh, kicking in as far as uh, volume early on or uh, any accident spots, anything to get in the way on 84. East and West of Boise doing great. Uh, it's pretty light this time of the morning on the connector 184 as well. And uh, away from the freeways too. Not uh, buildups quite yet this morning. Karcher Road, uh, Highway 2026, areas like that will begin to get a little volume most likely here in about the next uh, 15, 20 minutes. We'll follow it up till 7 for you. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, just make sure you're tuning it to News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We're diving into what you need to know about the prominent disease. And later, ending polio around the world. Who's backing the big undertaking? when we come back. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. 624, take a look at this. Now it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and the White House is lighting up to raise awareness. Now patients sharing their stories, helping educate women about the disease and the importance of early detection. Naomi Ruckham, she introduces us to a woman being treated for triple negative breast cancer. Renee Williams gets mammograms and does self exams with her family history of breast cancer. Earlier this year, the 52 year old felt a lump. My mom passed away from breast cancer when I was five years old. I always had a feeling that either me or my sisters, one of us would end up with it and it ended up being me. Renee was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer. The aggressive cancer is more common in women under 40 who are black or who have a BRCA1 mutation. The cancers are more likely to come back after treatment and have a poorer outlook than other breast cancers. A triple negative breast cancer is a very scary diagnosis, but it does sound like there's hope. Yes, absolutely. So Dr. The, uh, Sylvia Adams with NYU Langone uh, Health says adding immunotherapy to the standard chemotherapy is a major advance in treatment for patients, mm -hmm. including Renee. We actually had a very early good clinical response and were able to take her to surgery earlier. And she had no residual cancer at time of surgery, which predicts an excellent outcome. And, um, and cure. For patients with early disease, clinical trials are underway to better tailor treatments. Make sure that patients have less side effects from, from the chemotherapy. Maybe we can do less chemotherapy in some patients. I don't care what diagnosis you get. That doesn't mean it's a death sentence. Renee wants women to know early detection is critical. Sometimes you won't feel it. Go and get your mammograms. The mother and grandmother is starting radiation. She's back at work as an oncology clerk and grateful to help others going through what she has. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News, New York. 
Well, having a window in a hospital room could give patients a much better shot at a speedy recovery following surgery. Now, after looking at nearly 4,000 cases, researchers at the University of Michigan found that mortality rates were 20% higher for patients admitted to a room without a window. Now, their research also shows that giving patients their own rooms and keeping them close to a nursing station also improved those outcomes. And the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation says it will commit an additional $1.2 billion to the effort to end polio around the world. The announcement was made at the World Health Summit in Berlin. Part of the money will be used to stop outbreaks of new variants in the, of the virus. Coming up on CBS 2 News, an aerial view from the Four Corners fire. A look at the damage and how folks in the area are now cleaning up. And here's a look at your primetime lineup. Of course, after all your favorites, join us for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. Coming up on CBS 2 News, thousands of neighbors in Washington state fleeing their homes. Why officials are warning them to get out before it's too late. Plus, recession fears aren't going anywhere as inflation continues to cause problems across the globe. And volunteers putting the final touches on a new mural. How soon they're expected to finish. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. 4 are showing a beautiful day today in Boise. Right now, temperatures fairly cool. We're at about the low of 47 degrees today, but clear skies, and we're going to see those clear skies carry into today. 76 to 77 degrees is going to be the high. Not much change from over the past few days. We're going to continue to see sunny skies as well as these dry conditions. Here's a look at Futurecast. Futurecast is going to show us the little to no cloud cover we're going to see. There may be some high clouds moving into Monday night, but by Tuesday morning we're going to see that clear up and Tuesday is shaping up to be another beautiful day here in the Treasure Valley. Wednesday we're going to carry on these sunny skies as well as these above average temperatures and that's going to continue on into Friday as well. Friday is where we could see a temperature drop. I'll get, in, I'll get into that in just a little bit but high temperatures for today 77 degrees looking like the high throughout the Treasure Valley 77 in Emmett 77 in Boise Mountain Home in Ontario as well. Moving over to Caldwell 75 five degrees expected there and 76 degrees over in Nampa moving up to the mountains 74 degrees over in McCall 72 degrees in Stanley and 77 degrees in Idaho City pretty mild today we're going to see that sunshine throughout the week as well love the sound of that thank you Vasily 631 on your Monday CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long live look out there Everything running along smoothly. Yeah, not seeing any incidents or accidents to note this morning. Looking good. So when you do eventually get in the car, just make sure you tune it to News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Though it wasn't the largest fire in Idaho this season, the Four Corners fire had one of the biggest impacts on southwestern Idaho. About a week into the blaze in the mountains west of Cascade, the wind switched and caused the fire to burn hot, fast, and towards the homes on the lake, and forcing those neighbors to evacuate. I have to admit that I didn't really think about fire when we bought the place here. People tell me that West Mountain is kind of an asbestos mountain. It hasn't burned in decades. But once you see that fire start and you see the trees torching, it becomes top of mind really quickly. Tom Gresham and his wife moved to Cascade from hurricane country. He says they're thankful to those crews who managed to keep that blaze at bay and plans to make changes to their property just in case they find themselves facing another close call. For more on the damage caused by the Four Corners fire, we have a special report from Chief Meteorologist Roland Stedham. Just head on over to IdahoNews.com to watch the full report. And more than 1,000 homes are under evacuation orders in Clark County, Washington. Officials there say the Nakia Creek fire is breaking containment lines. I, I, I mean, I think it's obviously people think it's pretty critical or else they wouldn't issue that. They don't they take that pretty seriously when they g get to that level. So it's, hey, grab what is important to you right now and make your way out of it. High winds have fueled the fire to move west and southwest. 
but homes aren't the only structures that are being threatened. As the blaze burns closer towards the large correction center, which is a facility that has a capacity to hold 480 inmates. Well, this morning there are several new signs a recession could be imminent. Now, the International Monetary Fund now lowering projections for global economic growth for the year of 2023. Our national correspondent, Christine Frazau, she has the latest. For so many Americans, inflation is top of mind. I'm hoping that it goes down, but all I see is it rising up and it's getting harder and harder out here. The reality on Main Street bringing new warnings from Wall Street and beyond. They're likely to put U.S. in some kind of recession six, nine months from now. The risks of recession are rising. As a Wall Street Journal survey of economists put the probability of a recession in the next 12 months at 63 percent, up from 49 percent in July's survey. The war in Ukraine, a major factor in food and energy prices rising around the globe. A lesson learned that may help the economy in the long run. It was all about cheap, cheap capital, uh, mostly from the U.S., cheap labor, mostly from Asia, in particular China, and cheap energy, in particular Russia coming into Europe. All those things are going away now. That shift, though, not coming soon enough for those struggling to make ends meet. A recent survey finding 76% of adults are making lifestyle changes to prepare for a potential recession, including 34% who say they're delaying making major purchases, such as a house or a car. Some speaking out against recent actions by the Federal Reserve, raising rates to try to cool demand. I think that it is wrong to be saying that the way we're going to deal with inflation is by lowering wages and increasing unemployment. That is not what we should be doing. The Biden administration insisting it's working hard to strengthen the supply side of the equation, with demand just not letting up. Part of why we do see a lot of pressure on prices is that while demand has come back. Uh, Americans uh, have more income because uh, Americans have jobs in this hi almost historically low level of unemployment. Uh, it's been hard for the supply side to keep up. Fears now growing that low unemployment rate will be the next thing to take a turn and that recession could follow. I'm Christine Frizzell reporting. Gas prices, they're sitting high this morning. Now in Idaho, the average is still around 4.41 a gallon. That's 52 cents higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up will be Costco. You can find it on South Cole Road in Boise at 415 a gallon. Your home heating bill probably going to be higher this winter. The U.S. Energy Information Administration says the price of natural gas, heating oil, propane and electricity will be more than last winter. Now families with propane can expect a 5% bump, a 10% bump for those with electric heat. Now those heating their home with natural gas or heating oil, that's expected to jump a whopping 28%. Today, volunteers are putting the finishing touches on a mural in the pedestrian tunnel at 8th Street. It's expected to be finished sometime today, and this is the one that's near the Anne Frank Memorial. Now, back in December, you may remember someone painted anti-Semitic graffiti in that tunnel. And Meridian's Recycle the Fall event is back again this year. It's done in partnership with Republic, which provides the city's waste and recycling services. Folks in Meridian are encouraged to leave their leaves out front in paper sacks for collection, or you can also drop them off. But a reminder, this isn't just for any yard waste. So no branches, garden plants, or pumpkins, and you're limited to 10 bags a week. Curbside collection starts on Halloween and runs until November 26th, and drop-offs run from October 18th through December 15th. For a list of drop-off locations and all the guidelines, go to IdahoNews.com. It might be a perfect day to go on a walk on the Greed Melt and go see that new mural. I checked yeah. it out on Thursday while they were yeah. still painting it. It's beautiful. I mean, they're, they're really putting a lot of effort in there. There's a ton of volunteers helping out, so it's a really cool site. If you got great, yeah. going to be great outside. Oh, I love it. May stop by, grab a cup of coffee, and make your way down. It's, it's beautiful out there this morning yes. as well. Only yeah. a light jacket really needed, so if you're going to get out, might as well do something enjoyable. Yeah, an activity <laughs> for today on this, another beautiful day here 
here in the valley. 77 degrees is expected to be the high here in Boise. There is a cold front over in the Midwest. That's that area in blue you're seeing right next to Pierre. That cold front is not what we're seeing here on the West Coast. We're still dealing with a lot of high pressure, especially in the Pacific Northwest. 73 in Idaho Falls and 77 over in Boise. And we're going to continue to see these above average temperatures throughout much of this work week. Not much change expected. Lots of sunshine, lots of above average temperatures, but heading into this weekend, there is a chance of rain. That's some low pressure coming off the coast of the Gulf of Alaska, and we're going to see that make its way into the Treasure Valley. But for the next couple of days, we're going to continue to deal with this high pressure system coming off the coast of Washington. We're going to see this high pressure bringing out the dry conditions as well as these sunny skies that we've been dealing with for the past two weeks now. And we're going to see this into the next couple of days. Here's a look at the temperatures. 77 degrees Monday and Tuesday. That'll drop to 76 on Wednesday, and then we'll drop to 75 degrees on Thursday. Temperatures will start to drop even more heading into the weekend. 71 degrees on Friday, and then we'll drop below the average of 64 Saturday and Sunday. That's due to this low pressure I was talking about earlier off the coast of Alaska. It's expect models are showing that it will make its way into the Treasure Valley, and we could see clouds as well as precipitation here in the Gem State. All right, enjoy those changing leaves now. Maybe blown away a little bit. That's yeah, a big low pressure. Really could system. happen. So you don't have to rake those leaves, especially Ashley's boyfriend won't have to rake the leaves outside. It'll blow away. <laughs> I know we feel bad for him, don't we? All right, <laughs> CBS Two News and News Talk KBOI, of course, bringing you team traffic all morning long. Let's take a live look out there this morning. Yeah, and let's get a check of it from the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. Good morning, Ron. Well, good morning. Uh, things going along quite well. Little increase in traffic volume, of course, that's to be expected. A little more consistent volume coming on to I-84, for example, at spots like 10 Mile or Meridian Road. And that creates a little bit of merge slowing. Upper left-hand corner, you can see I-84 at 10 Mile. More volume coming down that long on-ramp trying to merge in. But uh, nothing out of the norm. No big issues, no long delays or trouble spots as far as any uh, crashes, anything like that. Even away from the freeways, relatively quiet still at this stage. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, just make sure you're tuning it to News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, hey folks, it's time for our question of the day. That question, only 12% of adults use this word to describe themselves. All right, what is it? Yeah, I mean, 12% is low. I don't, I don't really know what to think here. Like, it could be something like, I get, I'm still going to keep my guess of introvert, but I really don't know. It could be anything. I like that. I like, okay, the, uh, the one saying, that, describing yourself as average. I thought that I one was like a good guess, one. too. Feel Not like very many people will say that about themselves. Very few people. What do you think, Ashley? I, I like the answer average as well, just because it's very honest. <laughs> <laughs> it hey, well, honesty. All right, Mark says fit. Oh, yeah, like, a, like you know your little toned fit? Only a few people saying that, apparently. Corey says bougie. I saw this comment. I really liked that answer. Especially if you're bad and bougie. <laughs> All right, let's see what else the folks at home have to say. Jeff says a good listener. Oh, that's a good one. I another, like that. Yeah, another thing you just hope people kind of notice about you. Yeah, exactly. Not something yeah. you really say out loud sometimes. <laughs> All right, I like these guys. We still have 15 minutes to get those guesses in if you think you know the answer. Of course, you can do that on our Facebook page or our Twitter, and we'll reveal the answer right before CBS This Morning. Coming up on CBS 2 News This Morning, January 6th hearings are wrapping up. Why some want to call on additional witnesses. CBS 2's adventure weather local forecast showing us temperatures across the gem stay over in Caldwell 75 degrees expected as the high today that'll drop to 39 degrees at night and jump right back up to 75 degrees tomorrow and then over in Donnelly 75 degrees expected there as well that'll jump to drop to 34 degrees at night and then jump up one degree below today's high of 74 degrees tomorrow. Thank you Vasily. Well, the January 6th Congressional Committee, they're set to issue a subpoena to former President Trump after members unanimously voted to do so following their final scheduled public hearing. Now, former President Trump responded a day later with a 14-page letter attacking the panel. 
CBS News correspondent Wendy Gillette, she has the latest developments from New York. There are nine eyes and zero no's. It's unknown when the January 6th committee will issue a subpoena to former President Trump after Thursday's vote, but it's expected soon. He has not indicated if he'll comply, responding with a rambling 14-page letter in which Trump called the committee members political hacks and thugs. Doors. Republican member Adam Kinzinger appeared on ABC's this week. He's required by law to come in, and uh, he can ramble and push back all he wants. That's the requirement for uh, congressional subpoena to come in. Congress Congressman Kinzinger was asked if the Justice Department should hold Trump in contempt if he does not comply. Look, that's a that's a bridge we cross if we have to get there. Committee member Democratic Representative Stephanie Murphy was asked the same question on NBC's Meet the Press. With previous subpoenas, what you've seen the committee do is be very deliberate and take the response to our subpoenas on a case-by-case -case basis. And I imagine that we will also do that um, because we understand the seriousness of the charge of our committee. Over the weekend, Trump also came under fire from the Anti-Defamation League and others for a post on his social media platform criticizing American Jews. He wrote, no president has done more for Israel than I have, adding that evangelicals are far more appreciative of this than the people of the Jewish faith, especially those living in the U.S. He also wrote that he could easily be the prime minister of Israel. Wendy Gillette, CBS News. Congresswoman Zoe Zolofgren says the January 6th committee, they want to hear from former Secret Service Assistant Director Tony Ornato. Now then White House aide Cassidy Hutchinson testified that he told her about then President Donald Trump's behavior back on January 6th. Her secondhand account is that Trump's protectors told her him not to go to the Capitol and he lunged at one of them in anger. And more explosives struck Ukraine's capital city of Kyiv this morning. Ukrainian officials say waves of kamikaze drones with explosives carried out the attacks. It was not immediately clear if there were any casualties as a result of those explosions. But Ukrainian authorities say that a residential building was hit. And a local charity is shipping three 40-foot containers full of medical supplies to hospitals in Ukraine. In them is everything from band-aids to wheelchairs. The donation comes from Hands of Hope Northwest and the value of the shipment is nearly $1 million. The supplies should be in Ukrainian hospitals in just over a month. Love to see that. And what I also love to see is these temperatures. Mm -hmm. Looks like they're sticking around for another full week. Yes. Now, I know we're not excited about that, <laughs> but the good news is that colder air for all of our cold weather folks also on the way too. It's a chilly yeah. morning though if you're waking mm -hmm. up in the Long Valley. Yeah, chilly morning for sure. Temperatures in the high 40s through much of the Treasure Valley. But we're going to see that sun come out today and it's going to come out for the rest of the week as well. Today's high expected to be 77 degrees. When you head out the door this morning, however, going to be fairly cold. We'll see the biggest temperature jump from 9 to 11 a.m. 48 degrees at 9. That'll jump to 60 degrees by 11, leading to that high today by 5 p.m. And that high high 13 degrees above the average for this time of year. That's due to this high pressure system that's continuing to hit the gem state. It's bringing out the sunshine, bringing out the dry conditions and bringing out clear skies as well. But that is set to change heading into the weekend. This weekend we can expect this low pressure system building off the coast of Alaska to make its way into the gem state, bringing in precipitation as well as those clouds. But today going to be 77 degrees across much of the Treasure Valley. 77 in Boise, Emmett, Idaho City, Mountain Home as well as Ontario, and then up in the mountains, 74 degrees in McCall. Moving to the extended forecast, we're going to see sunshine throughout much of the week. 76 degrees on Wednesday, and that'll jump, drop to 75 degrees on Thursday. Then we'll see temperatures drop all the way to 71 degrees on Friday, and that's when the clouds, will, uh, clouds and rain will start to make their way into not only the Treasure Valley, but the mountains as well. We're going to see showers on Saturday and Sunday. And you were also saying the chance of some snow over our higher yeah, peaks? Well, that'll be more in the mountain areas. We'll see a chance of snow. We're not going to guarantee any snow at all, but there is a chance, especially at those higher elevations. Ah, keeping my fingers crossed. We'll keep it up in the mountains. Mm -hmm. I like to keep it warm down yeah, here. Warm over here. We're working on it, Vasily. All right, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's take a live look out there this morning and send it over to the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien.
Not doing bad at all. The Monday drive, don't have any uh, complications going as far as stalls or accidents, anything like that. And uh, volume really in uh, decent shape on ID4 through Nampa. And the merge area is even in Meridian. Not uh, doing too bad. Very minimal slowing, if any. And don't forget construction spots, uh, various areas like the work on Highway 2026. Careful through that area around Star Road and Highway 16. Buildups will begin to kick in in that location eastbound. Uh, most likely a little more next hour. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do eventually get in the car, just make sure you tune it to News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM. We'll be right back. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 6.54. Welcome back. Governors in southern border states are continuing to bus and fly migrants to those northern cities, sometimes unannounced. Now CBS's Astrid Martinez takes a closer look. It's a dangerous journey that can end in death or the chance to start a new life. Thousands of migrants flocking to the U.S.-Mexico border in search of better opportunities. In recent months, nearly 16,000 have been dropped off in New York City, including Vilker Infante and Kaila Cherema. Fleeing violence, the young couple left Venezuela for Peru. But with no steady work there, in July, Vilker, Kayla, and their 10-year-old son made the month-long torturous trek north and crossed into Texas. In August, they flew to New York. Excellent. The couple remains thankful to U.S. Border Patrol officials who granted them temporary legal asylum. These people cross sometimes seven, eight, ten countries to get here. Jesus Aguais is the executive director of Aid for Life International, a nonprofit that helps asylum seekers with health care and housing needs. We want one thing and one thing only, that everyone is welcome and treated with dignity in New York City. But the couple says it was different in Texas. They say they were approached by people claiming to be from Catholic organizations who insisted the family board a bus to Chicago where the government might take their child. In a statement, a spokesperson for the office of Governor Greg Abbott said the migrants willingly choose to go to Washington, New York City or Chicago. For now, the family is focused on applying for permanent legal status and working papers, which can take up to a year, a critical step to starting their new life. Astrid Martinez, CBS News, New York. In two of the nation's largest grocery store chains, Kroger's and Albertsons, have announced a nearly $25 billion deal to merge. Together, the companies will have more than 710,000 workers and operate nearly 5,000 stores. The deal is likely to face scrutiny from U.S. antitrust enforcers. All right, well, it is time for our question of the day. That question, only 12% of adults use this word to describe themselves. What is it? The answer is spontaneous. Oh, oh that's a good one. Yeah, a lot like of those good it. guesses, though. I liked a lot of those guesses. Yeah, there were good yeah. guesses out there, folks. All right, hope you have a good morning. We'll see you back here at 11. Take the news with you on the radio, News Talk KBOI, and for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is coming up next, and watch for your next local newscast on CBS 2 today at 11. Connect with CBS 2 for local news and weather on IdahoNews.com.